Over the last number of years, there seems to be a movement in a number of directions from both fashion to uh, ecologically friendly uh, to textures and soft hands and a lot of different movements over the last several years. Uh, I want to do just a little bit of a history on uh, plastic salt water base and that type of uh, scenario. Typically over, gosh, the last many, many, many years, 30 or 40 years, plastic salts have been our best method for decorating t-shirts for a number of reasons. They don't dry on the screen, uh, easy to work with, um, there's all kinds of uh, reasons uh, for simplicity of use that we, we have adapted the Blastisol kind of methodology. Oh, probably 30 years ago, water base kind of had its day. 30 years before that, it did as well. Now, in the last few years, water base is kind of uh, coming of age again with a couple of different uh, technologies. Uh, the reason we didn't use water base years ago or we went away from it was A, it wasn't necessarily any more or less harmful for the environment than a typical plastisol. B, it was much more difficult to use than a plastisol. Dry on the screen, uh, had a real short pot life, uh, just uh, durability, washability, hard to cure, lots of reasons not to use water base. And that's kind of all changed in the last couple, you know, five years. With the ecological movement, with the green movement that's worldwide, whether it's uh, electricity or uh, manufacturing of tires, um, it's affecting all of us. And then there's been additional legislation in the last several years about phthalates. Phthalates, phthalates. Phthalates are nothing more than a chemical that's added to plastic and rubber to add malleability or pliability, adds flexibility. And we have, I think it's a, up, up to six phthalates, phthalates or phthalates in our inks, in the Plastisol inks. And a few years ago, legislation has been struck up that we'd like to remove phthalates from all kids' products. It happens that there's three phthalates in our inks that are among the phthalates and heavy metals that the legislature is trying to remove from all kids' products. Now, ultimately, shoes were exempted. Um, there's other products that have somehow been ex exempted as well. And wearables is kind of on the edge. We're not sure where we stand. The ink companies have spent millions of dollars developing products where they A, have either pulled these three phthalates out and made it phthalate compliant, and there's a difference here in, in verbiage and wordage, or they've completely stripped the phthalates out with, and, and pulled all six, and they become non-phthalate. So there's a non-phthalate which pulls all th six out, and there's a phthalate a compliant which pulls the three that are being legislated. A couple of schools of thought. Pull the three out, we're under the umbrella of the law, we're in good shape. The guys that are pulling all six out are saying, hey, this is the first three. Surely they'll ask for the next three legislature down the road. That's a, who knows how that's really going to work itself out. So be wary of that or at least ask about what that means, compliant versus non thylate So that being said, the plastisols that we've used that have been so easy over the years have changed. So the millions of dollars that the, the uh, ink companies have put into these thylate compliant or non thylate products to try to mimic the movement or the, the usability of, of a standard or traditional plastisol uh, has been pretty tough. We're closer now than we've ever been. Uh, most everybody now has a product now that averages in the 20 to 25% more expensive than the classic version, but behaves almost the same. There's a few different little build-up issues that are different, but for the most part, the thylate compliant and non-thylate products are behaving like plastic plastisols. Another direction has been to go in a non-PVC non-thylate. So you take the thylate component, transfer it over to also a non-PVC. Now, if you think about that, the legislature is demanding the thylate situation. PVC is being run by the brands, the majors, Nikes, Adidas, uh, these folks are driving that uh, for a couple of reasons. Plastic. Plastic bad. Plastic bad. So we've got to pull plastic out of our inks. Well, if you think about these plastisol companies coming up with an ink that doesn't have plastic in it, that's quite a challenge. Things have really changed for these major manufacturers, though they've spent millions as, as well. And the first edition of the PVC products did all right. They, uh, for the most part, uh, with plastisol replacement PVC products, they had a bit of a sandpaper, real rough feel, a little harder to work with. Um, 
hasn't really caught on in the mainstream, but the brands continue to push. So the second generation has hit us the last couple of years, and they're much better. I think we're a lot closer now with a lot better hand feel, a lot lower uh, uh, fusion temperature, curing temperature, which allows us to print these on the ever so popular performance fabrics uh, with the unstable dyes because of lower curing temperatures, really giving us kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a different product, a different animal here, giving us some new directions to go in. Uh, so the, the outlook on that is promising. And then now we're back to water base as well. Obviously, not obviously, but it's PVC and thylate free as well. So ultimately, uh, the, the high solids products have gotten far better than they were just a few years ago. Uh, way less drying in the screen to deal with, even in a dry climate like ours. And we're able to take water base up to meshes, say 305, and that was unheard of even just a few years ago. So we're able to do and get a, a smooth, not a super soft hand with these high solids inks, but a pretty smooth somewhere in between say a discharge hand feel and a plastisol hand feel using the, these high solid zincs. So they've really come a long way. So really the ink companies have poured a fortune into dialing up these inks for us. It's exciting. However, the ink prices have jumped significantly when you go from a classic plastisol to a non-thylate, non-PVC, and the, the high solids water bases are, are more expensive than they used to be. You just got to get it on the end. If we can get our customers to start paying for those specialty applications, which is ultimately kind of what we try to do, elevate that, that uh, market level so we can get a little bit more, that's kind of where the, the uh, product lines are going over the last, gosh, it's probably been 15 years since the first, first kind of indication from the big boys that they wanted to start going with a PVC-free product.